What's up with everybody? It's your man Moyo B. And Nicole. We're back here with another reaction mm -hmm. video. A special video request from guest gamers. Guest gamers want us to react to uh, Canada in World War One, the Great War Special. Okay, it's gonna be pretty interesting. That'll be interesting. See, talk about specifically just Canada's. Part. Yeah, from their perspective. Mm -hmm. So we definitely look forward to it. Yeah. But I say thank you, guest gamer, for your thank support. You so much. Um, if you want to support the channel, you can um, send us a special video request by checking out the links to our stream labs. It's gonna be in our description and our video cards. And make sure to keep another ten minutes. Let's dive right into it. We do special episodes that cover a lot of topics from the war that we can't cover in depth in our regular episodes. A while ago, we did one about Poland during the war, and a lot of you have written to us to ask that we cover some other countries, and that is what I'll do today. So today, I'm going to talk about Canada. Canada, baby. Canada, our neighbors. I'm Indy Nidell, and welcome to a Great War special about Canada during World War I. Before I go further, if you like our weekly episodes and don't want any spoilers of future events, you should maybe watch this special after the war ends. In 1914, <laughs> when the war broke out, Canada was a dominion of the British Empire. Though it had been settled for several hundred years, it was officially confederated in 1867. The, the outbreak is? of the war, it had a population what? of fewer than 8 Canada. million people, with a military comprising just 3,110 men and two training ships. Wow, that's like war, nothing. Well yeah, over that's 600,000 yeah. Canadians would serve in uniform, and Jeez. Canada's army would have a reputation as a highly effective military force. Now, when Britain huh. declared war on Germany, Canada, as part of the empire, was automatically also at war. Yeah. Yeah. Among British Canadians, many of whom were recent immigrants, enthusiasm at the outset of the war was high. Even before the call went out for a force of 20,000 to be established, 100,000 men had volunteered. The first contingent of soldiers, dubbed Canada's Answer, embarked for Europe in October 1914, 31,000 strong. The Canadian Expeditionary Force, CEF, fought its first major action at the Second Battle of Ypres in April 1915. On April 22nd, the Germans released 168 tons of chlorine Ooh. gas to kick off their Dang. offensive. The gas I mean, that seems like a lot to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but... I mean, for like a small army, they was like, well, you can't really call them a small army because I'm guessing they have them British. Right, they were they, kind of technically part of the British forces. Yeah. But then you said by the end they had a lot of people. So. Yeah. Gas swept over the trenches of French colonial troops, killing or forcing the retreat of thousands of troops and leaving a huge hole in the Allied line. The Canadians closed the gap and held the line against advancing German troops, taking heavy losses in the following action at Kitchener's Wood and a second gas attack at saint Julien. Now, Kitchener's Wood marked the first time a European colonial force defeated a European power on European soil. And after the war, oh. French Field Marshal Ferdinand Foch would call the Canadian actions at Kitchener's Wood the greatest act of the war. As hmm. the CEF grew to four divisions on the Western Front, Canadian leaders insisted the divisions fight as a unified Canadian unit, as opposed to being joined with different elements of hmm. the British Army. Okay. And on April 9th, 1917, the four Canadian divisions fought together for the first time. 97,184 men of the Canadian Corps achieved a decisive victory at Vimy Ridge, capturing heavily entrenched German positions on an important strategic ridge overlooking the Douai Plain in northern France. Lieutenant General Arthur Curry, commander of the 1st Canadian Division, who before the war was actually a failed real estate and land developer huh. in British Columbia, Dang was instrumental in the planning of the Canadian attack at Vimy Ridge and in implementing new strategies that led to the successful capture of the ridge. Curry took over as commander-in-chief of the Canadian Corps in June 1917 and would lead the Corps for the remainder of the year, with the four divisions of the Canadian Corps most often fighting together. Over 300,000 Canadians had been recruited by 1916 but Prime Minister Robert Borden had promised 500,000 by the end of that year. See, many Canadians were against conscription, notably farmers, pacifists, mm. and union leaders, who decried the diminishing workforce and opposed forcing men to fight. Opposition oh, they was against it, so they didn't want to force somebody to join into the war. Yeah, that's what where residents thought of the yeah. war as a British war that wasn't really their business. In spite of that, the yeah. French-speaking 22nd Regiment was formed the only French-speaking regiment of the CEF. The huh. Military Service Act, which began conscription, was enforced from January 1st, 1915. But the act allowed for many exemptions, 
and of the 404,385 men who were subject to conscription, 385,510 of them actually sought an exemption. Wow. Wow. 95%. That's insane. A lot of them got exempt. That's crazy. Constantly. And on Good Friday, 1918, a massive riot began in Quebec City with an estimated 15,000 protesters. The federal government called in the army to quell the riot. And the two groups clashed on Easter Monday. Hundreds on both sides were wounded and four rioters wow. were shot dead. Jeez. It was a culmination of a bitter social and political rift that would reverberate in Canada for decades. By the end of the war, only 24,132 Canadian conscripts had actually made it to the front line. The conscription huh. crisis had another effect on Canadian society, giving female relatives of soldiers the right to vote in 1917 hmm. opened the door for universal suffrage, and the next year, it became a fact. The Canadian Corps distinguished itself on the battlefield. After Canadian successes at Ypres, the Somme, Vimy, and Pascendale, British Prime Minister Lloyd George even said, quote, whenever the Germans found the Canadian Corps coming into the line, they prepared Prepare for, for the, the worst. worst. Huh. Unquote. Having That's gained such a yeah. reputation, they often found themselves as the spearhead of British Army operations. And during yeah. the Hundred Days Offensive between August 8th and November 11th, 1918, the Canadian Corps led much of the offensive hmm. at a great cost. 45,835 Canadian casualties Jeez. were taken in the last three months of the war. One big effect of the war on Britain was the formation in the spring of 1917 of the Imperial War Cabinet, who passed Resolution 9, calling for the lands of the empire to be recognized as an imperial commonwealth and giving dominions mm. of the empire the right to a voice in foreign policy and foreign relations. Prime Minister Borden attended the 1919 peace conference in Paris, where Canada, despite not having any option to enter the war in 1914, yeah. was a signatory of the Treaty of Versailles. The First huh. World War cool. also had a lasting effect on Canadian identity. The efforts of the Canadian Corps were the first major acts of the young country on the world stage. And by the end of the war, despite having a military made up of men from all over the endless expanse of Canada and immigrants from Britain and other countries, soldiers now strongly identified themselves as Canadian. As hmm. one veteran of Vimy Ridge put it, we went up the ridge as Albertans and Nova Scotians. We came, came down, down as Canadians. Hmm. Here's a couple of sites yeah, that I find especially interesting. On December 6, 1917, just off Halifax Harbor, the Belgian relief ship Imo collided briefly with the Mont Blanc, a French ship that was carrying 2,653 tons of explosives. Whoa. The collision yeah. was minor, but it caused sparks, which then ignited benzoil on the deck of the Mont Blanc. The crew abandoned ship, and after 20 minutes, the fire erupted into a massive explosion, which ripped through the city, killing nearly 2,000 <gasps> people and leaving 9,000 injured. Oh. The force of the explosion Whoa. flattened buildings within a two and a half kilometer radius. It was the largest man-made explosion oh my until the nuclear age. Yeah. And it took years for Halifax to rebuild. I'm sure it did. Another thing that's Canada related. That is crazy. Newfoundland was Britain's oldest overseas colony and would not become part of Canada for a couple decades after the war. And so that island of 241,000 people fielded its own regiment during the war. Uh. On the opening day of the Battle of the Somme in July 1916, that regiment took 90% losses in a heroic advance oh on the Germans. 90%? After reforming it's almost all of them. Distinction, Pretty King much. George V of England bestowed the prefix royal on the regiment. This was the only time during the First World War that this honor was given, and only the third time in the history of the British Army that it has been given during wartime. Wow. So there you have it, a broad look at Canada and Newfoundland during the First World War. It could have been several hours long, actually, but my job today <laughs> was to give a shout out to a nation whose dancing. wartime contribution yeah. is often overlooked, but it was a considerable contribution. If you have anything to add to this or any opinions or thoughts, please tell us in the comment section below. And a big thank you goes out to Ryan Galliant, who helped us out tremendously with the research for this episode. Thank you very much, Ryan. You can click here for our episode about the beginning of the Second Battle of Ypres. And don't forget to subscribe to never, ever miss an episode or a special. See you next time. Yeah, it was extremely interesting because I definitely 
wasn't aware necessarily of Canada's part in the war. Yeah, me neither. So. I, you know, you pretty much hear about the United States. Right. You know, and, other countries, well, but I mean, not too much of I Canada. Think, yeah, I think we know mostly, obviously, Well, we're from the United States. But so. yeah. It was kind of cool because I forgot, I didn't think about the fact, again, this is World War One. Yeah. Um, and that this was, they were still a British territory. So mm-hmm. to begin the war, they were really kind of part of the British fighting group. Yeah, they did. Then yeah. they kind of became their own. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, we definitely enjoyed it on uh, Guest Gamer. Definitely, we definitely thank you for this awesome video request yeah. and your support. But you about to go to end this video. Don't forget to subscribe and thumbs it up. Turn on notifications. It's your memory B and Nicole. I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Stay awesome. Peace and love, baby.